One of the ways I sustain myself is to do a lot of self-care regimens. If you take care of yourself, it's like you're being thankful for what you're given. Showing gratitude to the energy that brought me to this earth, the family that brought me to this earth. It's really, really important. Being that I travel a lot and move around so much, I try to make sure that I take care of my body as if it's a temple. This career can take a toll on the mind and the body. I do a lot of meditations and prayers. And that's how we start our day. When I first started an assistant backstage at shows, I would make these little conditioners and these little oils like out of like natural ingredients that I grew up using and make these little care packages for the models and give it to them because I felt like they were out there fending for themselves. Your calling car preceded you. Before I ever knew your name, the models were talking about you. Uh -huh. Like all the black girls were yeah. like, we would look for him. <laughs> and if yeah. he wasn't there, or we they'd knew he to, wasn't gonna be on They'd go in the set. bathroom and hide. They'd go in the bathroom and hide. Or they would yeah. call you up. Are you on blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, can you do my hair before I go on set? Yeah. You wanting to look after them yeah, yeah, is yeah. a thought process that a lot of people wouldn't have thought about. When I was really, really young, I fell in love with the idea of doing hair just because it kind of gave you a space to be creative. I was like a dreamer and an escapist as a young kid, like everything was a game. And hair was like one of the tools that you can do that with. Just being a male in the community that I was raised in, doing hair was like looked down upon. One Saturday I went to work with my aunt and she used to work in a salon in Kingston. And I would just watch her do people one after the other and I was so amazed by what she was doing. and How the women would come in upset and then they would leave like laughing and dancing and, and happy. At the young age, I really did feel like, you know, hairstylists were magicians in a sense because they can change your mood. When I started to actually touch it and feel it in my hands, I felt connected to it in a sense. I felt like it was so layered and not just doing your hair just to do it. That is the first, first reason why I fell in love with it. There's not that much space using hair to communicate in an art space. Mm -hmm. I've always felt like I was an artist and I always felt like, um, it's not just hair. A lot of the stuff that I do is kind of like a statement or a transgression against beauty standards that was forced on us. Hair has such a universal language, especially um, black hair. Hair can be weaponized. Mm -hmm. It can be very political. Mm -hmm. It's a reflection of self. It's not just, oh, this is hair, you know. I do feel like people are trying to make changes, but I don't really feel like we're really changing until you really immerse yourself into just education and how to work on people that don't have the same texture as you or work on people who don't look like you. We're gonna always run into those problems unless people really immerse themselves in the education. I do feel like the beauty industry is evolving. I'm watching it to see where it goes. It's great for us to have some real real estate in like what's happening in the business of, of beauty. Collaborating is something that I absolutely love about what we do. Some of the people that I collaborate with are people that I grew up with and it's just so good to see the progression of like how we started and where we're headed to. I'm really inspired by young creatives that want to change the narrative of what's been going on, but I'm also inspired by the greats that have been doing it for years. I recently did a shoot with Paolo Reversi and I love working with Paolo Reversi. I've worked with Peter Lindbergh before he passed. I love working with Nadine, I love working with Campbell, I love working with Ib Kamara for sure. I love working with my bestie, Carlos. Akeem Smith is one of my favorite creatives to work with. Tyler Mitchell is one of my favorite creatives to work with. There's so many, we'll be here all night. <laughs> Even though I've seen a lot and a lot, I feel like I'm still a student. There's so much more to be done. Trying to get into this industry, I always had it that once you get me in a room, I'm gonna do it because the one thing I can do is hair. I'm a multifaceted person and I feel like sometimes in this industry, once you do one thing, they want you to stay in that space and I'm, I'm, I'm learning and I'm growing that. No, you don't have to, so stay tuned. My album coming out next week. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think most people don't know about you? That I'm nuts. <laughs> I love to cook. Okay. And I love to exercise and I love to 
hang out with family and friends and just be in spaces that you would never think I would be in. My world is very round. It's not just like fashion here. So it's, you know, there's so many different aspects of me that I use to balance this out. I am a student of life. I've always liked to make sure that whatever I'm doing in this high octane place, that I kind of maintain myself. And I think that, you know, the meditation and the prayer and the self regiments that I use to guide me through my daily journey is really important and grounds me.